morning, superstars. <laughs> we were just thinking of fun intros and we thought that'd be amusing. I am so excited, guys. It is double digits. We are number 10, Dressage Explained. I'm so excited. It's great. So let's get into it. You've got some epic, epic, epic questions today and remember guys we've got this new competition where you watch the four videos and every week we give away an epic prize we're even giving a prize away now where one person every single week gets to have a zoom with me so you get to either ask me questions directly and talk back and forth or you get to send me a video, I watch it, and then I give you a little bit of a play-by-play -play, um, feedback and having a look at it. So it's, it's pretty cool. So get involved, guys. If you don't know about that, just look around the community pages, the Instagram, you'll see what's going on, or write in the comments below and we'll send you the links. But um, this giving back is being pretty cool. I've, I've, oh, the, the messages from you guys have been amazing. So let's get into it. All right, guys, so you'll have to excuse my attire today. This is increasingly what you're going to be seeing because I am very, very cold person. Um, now, I've got a phone here just so I can read this question well because it's an epic question. I don't want to get it wrong. So it's from Kim K. And she was watching, watching, watching the Mowgli session. Sorry, do you just want to have a look what's going on down here? Show them, show them, look. Look at these two. All they do is just play all day. Oh, my God, look at them, look at them. Gosh. All right, guys, it's not the Jeff and you show. Come on, guys. Anyway, back again. So Kim K says um, she was watching the Mowgli episode and she was thinking about sitting in the banana and she says she understands it, but she's not quite sure how to sit in the banana shape. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, guys, click a little link here and that'll take you to the banana analogy. But most of you will know what I'm talking about. And she's worried, that, well, not worried, but confused as to when she sits in the banana shape that she kind of like goes to the left or goes to the right or collapses a hip and that her sitting to the, to the inside of the banana is a detriment to the straightness of her seat, if that makes a little bit of sense, okay? So, yeah, so I'll give them, giving that back to, oh, I'll put it in my pocket actually. I just want to read that to you so that you understood exactly what it was. And she's asked, is there things that she can do off the horse sometime, maybe to fix that and to ask for a bit more of an explanation. So what I've decided to do is get the saddle here and show you off a horse. Because I think if you see it off a horse, you're gonna understand a little bit more what's going on, okay? So I'm gonna get on now. I'm not gonna get on like that. <laughs> Let me be very creative about my horse mounting here. Feels a bit wooden, guys. Ching! <laughs> All right, so let's sit on our horse, okay. All right, now you're on a straight line and what you wanna feel is that when you're in your saddle that you feel like you're standing on the ground, okay? So that your legs don't feel like you're sort of pulled to one side. So maybe if you come in here, Tobes, and sort of look at my feet, feel like they're not like pulled to one side or you're not standing on, on the tippy toe like this or you're not really wedged your heels down like that. Just that you're flat, just like you're on the ground. Okay, you really want to feel like you're just standing on the ground, almost preparing for a little bit of a wide squat. Yeah, so you think about toes forward, you think about relax, you think about your pelvis being twisted forward a little bit, and you just relax. Okay, so that's how you've got to feel, and you're riding along. Okay, then I want my <laughs> stiff board here to bend a little bit say to the right so what I want to do is I want to make this side of my rib cage bigger and I want to make this side of my rib cage smaller so what I want to do is give this side of the body space okay so when you see it here guys you see I'm straight now if I put my weight to the inside Kim's a little worried that she's going to end up like this okay and you can see this stirrup has less weight in it this stirrup is like all the weight in it and my whole body is falling over now how do you stop this from happening honestly guys it's really just a little bit of thinking about it so just feel the evenness in your feet and you only have to go from here straight to ever so slightly over. Now, if you see my body here, it just shouldn't look any different. You see my legs, they look relatively the same. Yeah, so middle, inside of the banana, outside leg for canter, 
leg yield. But you see my body stays the same. Middle, let's make this the inside of the banana. Inside of the banana. My body's still straight. Because what I do is keep thinking about my train tracks. So my feet and my reins and my shoulders stay on the train track still, only my seat goes over a little bit, okay? If you have a look at from the behind, you'll see actually how much I am going over. So straight, okay? Then little bit banana, and you can see I am quite over still, even there. But you see that my upper body is still uber straight, okay? So again, middle, we'll do this as the inside of the banana, over, and even if I'm way over here, you see I can still stay straight. So this is where I'd sit if I had a horse that was really, really, really struggling to canter on that hind leg. Does that make a bit of sense, guys? Middle, banana, middle, Banana, middle, extreme banana, but you see, I'm still up here straight. Does that make sense, guys? Does that help a little bit? Does that make you be able to see what you've got to do there? It's not just about moving your whole body, it's being able to isolate your pelvis, isolate your hips, yeah? And if some of you aren't able to do that, you don't have the control, you want to watch the Don't Bounce in the Canter video, which I'll just put here, because again, that one's got heaps of pointers. And there's also some Pilates videos too, which I'll also put here. And all of that will help you have the ability to do that. Okay, we'll show one more time just here. Okay, guys, so then if you look at this from the front end, okay, we're here, we're banana. Okay, we're here. We're banana. Now I'm going to hold that banana shape. And can you just see that they can see my shoulders? You see how my shoulders are straight. Can you see that? And then we'll do it again. Middle. Banana. Look at my feet. Can't quite see them, but they're even in the stirrups. Yeah? Haven't moved here. And then again, you can see that my shoulders are straight back to the middle. I hope that helped guys. I hope that showed you it's about moving this part of your body, not like this, yeah? And how do you do it? You just think about it a little bit. That really all it is. Just, just think about it a little bit. Feel the balance in your feet like you're standing on the ground and don't let where your hips go influence the rest of your body, okay? Hope that helped. Tracy Norton, epic question. So Tracy asks all about basically what I mean when I say a horse is sticky or sticky to the left or sticky to the right. And she's think, assuming it means suppleness, which is right, Tracy, you're right. And she also said that her horse feels like that occasionally, but she'd like to know how to troubleshoot it basically and how to solve it before it becomes an issue, okay? So let's get into that a little bit. So what do I mean by sticky, okay? When I'm riding my horse, what I'm always trying to think of is that in my rein, in my legs, in my seat even, that it all feels the same, okay? That it all feels even, that it all feels relaxed. So if I squeeze this rein here, that the reaction that my horse gives me, and it might only be like this, guys, like the tiny, or even this, yeah? And I want my horse to react or yield to that. And when I do that, I want that reaction on that rein to feel identical to the reaction on this rein, okay? If I ask my horse to say circle left or circle right, I want the circle on the right to feel the same as the left, okay? And if it doesn't feel the same, those might manifest in different ways. So for a really advanced horse, it might be that you um, they're actually very visibly straight, they're not crooked, but actually when you feel them, when you ride them, maybe their nose is slightly twisted like this. So if you watch high level horses, you might see a couple that sort of cruise around like this, 
that's a sticky point that's not being solved, that's just being hung. On a higher, on a lower level horse rather, it might be that when they turn a circle to the left, it feels fine, but when they turn a circle to the right, they fall in all the time. That's a sticky point. They're sticky a little bit to the right. Okay, so how do you solve it? How do you solve it? So come with me, let's have a look at a wall because I think that's probably gonna be the best way to articulate it to you. So, well on the wall, okay? Wall's a really good place to be with a horse because it gives you a measure. This wall is almost like your training wheel because as you can th see, if you're riding a straight line near a wall, the horse can only really go that way and lean up against the wall. He can't really do too much else. So this ends up being a little bit of a training wheel for you and also helps you figure out where they are a little bit crooked, okay? So when I'm sort of cruising up the wall here, the whole time I'm saying to my horse's body or even let's say my horse's head to begin with, head, horse's head, will you look that much to the right, to the right? Yep, that was easy. Horsey, would you move the same amount to the left? Oh, that was a bit stickier. Now it's not visible, so it's not this, yeah? It's this. It's like almost just my eyes moving. It's not a visible thing, it's just the willingness to open, the willingness to yield, okay? So if the right hand side felt easy and the left hand side, I came across a little bit of a stick. And when I say a little bit of a stick, it's just not as smooth as the other side. It might be as simple as that. In that moment, I go, that wasn't quite as smooth. I'm going to supple that area. So again, I'm walking up the wall. Tiny little squeeze with my right hand. He, he flexes, he listens, good job. Tiny little squeeze with my left hand and I feel, oh, that's gonna take a little bit more work than this side did. That's me going, whoop, that's sticky. Solve it with suppleness. So, little look, little look. Oh, that's sticky. Leg yield, 10 metre circle. Pushing the quarters out, as I leg yield, it makes the inside hind go further under, makes him take a bigger step. So it really encourages this sticky part to open. Come back to the wall, go straight, ask again with my little tidy aid for that little bit of flexion. If he listens, super, forward with no message. If he doesn't, back to a leg yield. So that's how you're able to tell if your horse isn't supple enough when you just play with the stickiness, okay? Another one might be we're moving the hindquarters. So let's say we're beginning travers, yeah? So we come around the corner because the corner kind of creates a travair anyway. And we wanna start our first travair, okay? And on this rein, I come around the corner and he happily stays like that for one, two, three, four steps. And then I go, cool, let's go straight again, okay? I do it the other way. I do my travair around the corner. Remember the corner kind of creates the travair shape. And then when I hit the wall, I keep going. But when I hit the wall here and ask him to keep the travair, he leans into this shoulder and he pulls on that rein. And I kind of can't keep the quarters in. I don't try harder. In that moment, I go, right. He's pushing on this leg. It's a sticky leg. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna make him more supple to the inside of his rib cage again, okay? How am I gonna do that? I'm going to keep the natural bend for the travel on a circle. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to leg yield a little bit over and then circle and then leg yield a little bit over and then circle. The natural bend keeps the travel that we're looking for and the leg yield, gets that shoulder more upright. So as you go around, shoulder more upright. As you go around, shoulder more upright with the leg yield. Shoulder more upright with the leg yield. Now I've got my training wheel again. So I again, come around the corner, leg yield into the wall to get that shoulder up. I can pin it against the wall to help me. Now big one here, big leg yield. 
So he's got his shoulder up and then keep going again. Again, if he dove, just do the same exercise. That's the sticky point. Sticky points are where it's difficult to do what was simple on the other side, okay? You might have it with a horse going on the bit as well. They do this, ah, one way, and do, 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 the other way, yeah? That again is a sticky thing. So how do you solve this, ah, you get the more supple, yeah? All right, so you're up here, will you turn right? Yes, will you turn left? No, as soon as I turn left, the head goes up. Okay, like we did with Mowgli. Let's just open a rein, turn a circle, get the quarters crossing over so that you use that bit of your body. Now turn left again, because that's nice and easy. Now turn right, oh, I got it. So you find those sticky points to get the connection. And rather than avoiding the sticky points or trying to move, you do that same movement harder, you say, that's my opportunity to use suppling exercises, okay? And again, if you need suppling exercises, three part series, one, two, three. I don't know if the editors were good enough to be able to do that. <laughs> but one, two, three, these three here are suppling exercises that you can do. And you use these exercises, not only as a whole workout, but in moments of stickiness. What is stickiness? When you can't replicate the same thing you did the other way. I hope that made sense. Okay, Avania, this is an amazing question. And this is all about mindset, guys. And this is really, really, really close to my heart. So I'm really keen to talk to you about this today. And I basically set up a three rule system in my life for it, okay? Three rule system is, if you're struggling with something on the horse and you're not sure what you need to do, break it down and take it step by step. So if for instance, you're trying to sit in the banana, but your shoulder falls and you don't want that to happen, just try for less. So go, I'm gonna sit in the banana, half of what I did before and do it for one step versus eight steps. And just keep making your accomplishments littler and littler and littler until it's something you're able to do. And then from that, build, okay? Step one, how do you need an elephant? One step at a time. Over the past month, I've had over 200 private messages to your writing success. People talking to me about feeling judged, feeling like they don't want to put their question up on the boards or up on um, public YouTube because they're worried about what people are going to say, what people are going to think. I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story about me in step two and step three to hopefully help you guys and inspire you guys to overcome um, those feelings of insecurity, to overcome those feelings of maybe even potential bullying. So I hope you really enjoy this. I hope this helps. Step two is about the sport. The sport itself is a fairly, it can be a little bit grumpy sport. It can be a little bit of an intimidating place to be. Okay. So I say treat everybody how you would like to be treated, no matter how they treat you and no matter how loud that is or big that is or how many people do it. Be different and treat them the way you would want to be treated, okay? Sounds like a really simple thing, but it really makes a big difference in your life, okay? I come from a position where I used to be really, really nervous and feel really, really anxious about other people and what they were saying and all of those sorts of things. And as soon as I started to take that look of, people used to say to me, don't worry about what people think. And if you worry, you worry, it's, it's, it, you, you can't. You know, it's like if you're scared of spiders and someone says, don't be scared of spiders, you're like, okay, but I'm still scared. So an actionable thing is much better. And what I learned is every time someone did something bad to me in, in my eyes or I felt judged or I felt like people were watching me and it, they weren't saying nice things or I got nervous at a competition because I was worried about what other people would say, I would simply just be extra special nice and do something for somebody else and not react to any of the bad behaviour on purpose. So it became a little bit of a game for me really. And once I did that, it took all the pressure away from me and I stopped worrying so much about what other people thought.
It really, it really made a massive difference. I went from someone who was so nervous, would never go to a masterclass, would never, oh my gosh, never speak on camera like this, never write at a competition without vomiting first, to the person you see today. Just by having a re having having a different reaction to the behaviour that was given to me. So whenever there was something negative that happened in the support, in the sport rather, I would respond in a more positive way. Okay? The more negative you feel, do things good more. Do more good things. Say more nice things. The more you do that, the more it helps your dopamine levels, the better you feel. And also, the better other people feel as well. Because mostly, if you feel judged, if you feel ridiculed, if you feel like things that people aren't being so nice or the industry isn't so nice, probably the people that are making you feel like that are also feeling the same way as you. They're just choosing to react in a different way. Not bad people, they're just treating you not in the right way. So think about that. Never worry about other people, okay? Last but not least is give back to the sport like you would like to have the sport give back to you. So for example, you loved those videos that Kate and Ash did where they rode G and they let you guys watch. How amazing was that? But I know that there's people watching that video who went, I love this, but there's no way I'd be brave enough to do that myself. Be brave. Give back to the sport. Show people, make yourself vulnerable like you would like them to be vulnerable to you so that you can learn. Because it doesn't matter where you are in your riding, somebody can learn from you. Somebody. And the more you give back and the more you show these, show, show everybody that you've got something to offer and that you're going to make yourself vulnerable so that you can help the sport, the more it becomes the norm in the sport, the more I'm not an abnormality. You know, people are saying, I love the way you're inclusive. I love the way you're describing things. I don't want to be an abnormality. I want this to be what the sport is like moving forward. Okay, and every single one of you is able to make that happen by giving back and being open in your own way with your own skills. Okay, so that's how I deal with my mindset um, across those pre three platforms. I hope that helped guys, really warm to my heart, really important question for me. I really, really think that we can change the, change the world actually. Oh, okay, on to the next thing. Okay guys, so Stephanie asks an amazing question and she asks a question about tendons uh, following the boot um, discussion we had last week. And during, during that discussion we discussed that we don't want to get the tendons hot and she said that her understanding was is that the tendons should be warm for work to um, prevent for injury and those sorts of things. And she said she's a bit embarrassed to ask. So Stephanie, Thank you for asking because those questions that you're a bit embarrassed to ask are the ones that nobody else asks and trust me, a million other people probably had that question. So thank you for asking and let me go through it for you. When you, they, you hear that expression that you need to warm the tendons up, warm the joints up before you get into your ride, what that means is just get the blood flowing, not actually really heat them up. So it's not about heating them up, it's just about getting the blood flowing, yeah? You also manage about stable band and bandaging the horse, the horse's legs if there's an injury, etc. That's not about keeping the leg warm. That's about having pressure to stop swelling and inflammation. Okay, so when we do a pressure bandage when there's an injury, we actually don't really want to do the pressure bandage if we can avoid it, but sometimes it's a lesser of two evils because a hot leg from inflammation is worse than a hot leg from an external source. Okay, so yeah, so, the, so when we're bandaging the horse with the injury, it's not to keep the warmth in, it's to keep the swelling down, which, I gives, which then keeps the warmth out, okay? And yes, the bandage creates its own heat, but that's a lesser of two evils than the heat caused by inflammation, okay? When you're riding a horse and you want to warm up his joints, warm up his muscles, warm up his tendons, that just means get the blood flowing. That doesn't mean um, you need to heat them up. It just means you don't want to go from standing in a stable or standing in a field really cold to going off cantering. It's just that you get the blood flowing a little bit, okay? 
so that's the difference and I hope that answered your question and then so when we put um, boots and bandages on our horses later on when they're riding you really want to make sure that we keep those tendons cool because the heat in the tendons is what causes injuries okay or what gives them prone to injuries so I hope that gave you a bit of clarity and thank you so 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 much for answering the question because it really is important and it's an epic question good work Thank you so much for watching guys. Remember we have competitions. We've got more competitions coming. So I'm, <laughs> so I'm really, really trying to grow this sport and grow the, the camaraderie that we've got on this channel globally a little bit more. So every single week you watch the four videos that we launched and on the Monday we do a live and all you've got to do is be there on the live. Tell me what your favourite one of those videos were. <laughs> Gigi spoken by Pom Pom. And be subscribed to the channel and every single week without fail somebody will win a sponsored item. Might be a jacket, it might be a Lux of London out outfit, it might even be a saddle one day. We'll just see how big our sponsors become. Plus, and this is hopefully the really cool thing, it's quite priceless, hopefully, that you guys can actually get a Zoom meeting with me, okay? So you can actually have a Zoom meeting with me for an hour and just ask me any question you wanna ask me, okay? For anybody that's brave enough mwah, to let the world see that and let's put it on YouTube, a must preface, if you win, you don't have to, but if you want to, are you willing to do it? We'd love to. You go in to the last draw where every six months I let someone come over here and ride one of my horses, okay? That's my gift to you. And don't worry if you don't live in the UK, it'll be open worldwide, okay? Let's grow this channel. Let's grow your learning together. And <laughs> let's just have a good time. I'll see you later, guys. Tomorrow is clipping the mini. It's so much fun. Mwah. Bye.